Addison syndrome, or primary or chronic adrenal insufficiency as it's also called, affects about 1 in 100,000 people. And today we're going to take a look at what contributes to this problem and what can be done from a natural approach to make things a bit better. Hi, I'm Sage. Thanks for joining me. I'm here to bring you cutting-edge, actionable health information to put you in control of your health destiny. Please support us by hitting the subscribe button and ringing the notification bell. It doesn't cost you a penny, and it does so much to support our tiny family business. I love helping you on your health journey, not just with educational information, but also with some of the amazing products that I've created for our company. You can find a link down in the description to the world's healthiest gourmet chocolates, delicious elixir blends, and the purest, most potent adaptogenic herbs. The most common symptoms of Addison syndrome are weight loss, muscle weakness, fatigue, low blood pressure, and digestive issues. And this is where because of a variety of factors that we'll talk about in a second, your adrenals are just absolutely not performing for you. And this is diagnosed by injecting ACTH and measuring an increase in cortisol. And if there's little to no increase whatsoever, it's an indication that you may be dealing with Addison syndrome. Now, treatment generally involves some kind of hormone replacement therapy because your body just isn't doing what it needs to do. But there are still some things from a natural perspective that can be done to support your system. 70% of Addison's disease cases are caused by an autoimmune disease where the immune system is making antibodies that are destroying the adrenal glands. Autoimmune conditions are always multifactorial, generally involving some immune genes and environmental factors and stress. So you definitely want to do what you can to control what you can. You're not going to be able to go in and control or edit your genes, but you can moderate your environmental factors and you can moderate your stress. So stress and environmental toxins, these are going to make it worse. Lack of sleep, pushing past exhaustion. If you have a poor diet that's not gut friendly, that's not going to help because heightened gut permeability is a huge issue when it comes to autoimmune diseases. And also if you're overtraining, or lack of exercise. You really got to find the sweet spot. Too much exercise and too little exercise, neither of those are good. It's about that Goldilocks zone right in the middle. Also, genetic factors uh, such as congenital adrenal hyperplasia are going to be an issue here. But these things, you know, it's, it's interesting to know that you have them, but there's not a lot you can do necessarily about your genetics at this stage. You also want to make sure that you're getting enough salt. Because you're going to have low aldosterone from Addison's, this is going to increase your need for dietary salt consumption. Now, I'm not saying to go have a bunch of Morton's Table Salt. I'm talking about having really high quality sea salt or Himalayan rock salt. Now, from a nutritional perspective, you want to make sure you have really optimized vitamin D levels, either by spending time in the sun, supplementing, or both. You want to be on an anti-inflammatory diet with plenty of healthy fats, plenty of vegetables, wild-caught low-mercury fish like wild caught salmon, for example, uh, high quality pasture raised grass fed animal products, sea vegetables, quality sea salt, as we were mentioning earlier, uh, high fiber foods and probiotic fermented foods is a really good idea too. And managing the stress, of course, nobody has ever been happy to hear from somebody else. You need to just chill out. Don't stress so much. It doesn't work. It's literally the least functional advice anybody has ever given. So I like to instead share the functional advice of how you can improve your stress response because external stressors, they're not going to stop, right? There's nothing you can do about it. But you can change the way that your biology responds to stress. You can do this through meditation. You can do this through breath work. You can do this through a yoga practice, through exercise. You can take supplements like magnesium, magnesium um, glycinate, magnesium l 3 and 8 both great forms for this. You can also look at taking herbs like reishi mushroom, hoshu wu. You can take herbs like ashwagandha and holy basil and rhodiola and Siberian ginseng, lion's mane. You have so many tools here available to you because the external stressors are not going to stop, but you can change the way that you respond to them. And a lot of these herbs that we mentioned are also going to support your immune system at the same time. Things like reishi mushroom, and cordyceps, ashwagandha, astragalus, because you want to moderate the functioning of your immune system. You don't want immune stimulants or immune suppressants necessarily, but herbs that are going to help bring your immune system into balance. These things act as like an operating system upgrade for your immunity so that it can act more intelligently and more discerningly. So if you've tried any of these and had any good results, let us know in the comments, not just for me, not just so we you know, make the algorithm happy with lots 
lots of comments, but because somebody else who has been in your situation or who is in your situation now might see that comment and find it very helpful along in their own health journey. And before you go, here's a video that I think you'd enjoy watching next. And here's one the YouTube algorithm thinks you'd enjoy watching next. And there's a link to our website. Have a beautiful day and look forward to seeing you all again next time.